Good morning. Welcome to Christian Baptist Church. If this is your first time with us, and there are several of you who are here for the first time, uh, thank you and welcome. Uh, our numbers are few here in the congregation, but we're gathered also with those uh, online through Zoom Church, uh, and we'll have some. This is the day the Lord has made. Uh, it is for us to rejoice and to be glad in that. Uh, Laura, are you there for our uh, call to worship? I am. Great. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's pray together. God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Looks like we're having a bit of a delay problem online here with Zoom, but we'll work with that. Everything will be okay uh, here this morning. We're going to um, worship together in song, and I would invite you here in the congregation to stand uh, as we sing. The words will be on the screen uh, on the side.
Our scripture reading this morning is going to be done by Anna Marie. She is also on Zoom. Um, reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Anna Marie. Stephen, if you could play the uh, the video.
I just wanted to stop everything and take the time today to let you know how very thankful I am that you've been there for me. I want to say thanks for never giving up on me. Thank you for providing meals for us after Blake's surgery. Thanks for making sure I always had a ride to chemo. And thank you for helping me through this difficult season in my life, God. Thank you, God, for teaching me to be a strong single dad. Dear God, thank you so much for giving me this new job. I love it. Thanks for sending Jeff to take my shift last week so I could be with my family. For keeping me company on the first day of school. Thank you, God, for helping us get that bill paid. Thank you, God, for the clothes on my back. For giving me the courage to speak the truth. Thank you for forgiving me. For making my day better. For giving my life a melody. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for every single day. And one final thing, God. Thank you for always loving me, no matter what. Uh, please join me now as we pray for our tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful to be able to come before you, to become before you our holy God. You are the one and only God. And Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us and that your mercies are new upon us each and every day. We acknowledge that everything we are and everything we have comes from you. And we just ask, Ask your blessing upon our tithes and offerings divided. We just ask your blessing upon them and during this time as our act of faith, an act of service, Lord, an act of obedience and an act of thanksgiving and worship. We want to worship your holy name, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever gotten to a place in your life where you felt a little bit weary, maybe worn out on things that are going on in the world around you? Maybe you even felt like you wanted to give up. Maybe the problem is that there are so many people that would like your attention right now and their cries for help are like bongs in your head. And by bong, I mean gong. We respond to the sounds of our cell phones all the time, don't we? Bing. <laughs> we respond to the notifications, to comments, to uh, text messages. We listen to their voices, and they're constant. They seem to be incessant, especially in this day. But how do we respond when we get a notification from God? Do you know what his ringtone is? even sounds like first corinthians chapter 9 or sorry first kings chapter 19 verses 11 and 12 says the lord told elijah go out and stand before me on the mountain so, so elijah stood there and the lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain it was so terrible a blast that the rocks were torn loose but the lord was not in the wind and after the wind came an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. But the Lord was not, sorry, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a mighty fire. But the Lord was also not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Notifications, ringtones, gongs, alerts, amber alerts. 
two in the morning. Bings, bongs, quacking when my son or daughter calls me. We all get them. Notifications. Communications devices have become part of our everyday life. We now follow people on Facebook, or maybe I should call it meta now because it's the new word. Instagram, Twitter, Getter. We get friend requests. We get tweets just to let you know what's on your mind or what you've had for lunch. We have stories, reels, vlogs, and blogs. Logs and posts absolutely seen some type of alert trying to get your attention. And it's not just embraced by a few people. Businesses, quiet individuals, loud individuals, great big corporations, and even churches, all are in that notification game. Everything from people to pasta seems to be branded or hashtagged these days. And for those of you who don't know what those things are, you're probably some of us have even measured our own value by what our social status seems to be, or the number of friends we have online, the number of followers we have, or the likes on our latest Instagram post. Being viral seems to be now the great aspiration of our generation. <laughs> and as I think about that, I'm not talking about COVID. How many of us wait until the next morning? Seriously. To get up and to grab our floor. How many of us wait till then to grab our phone and then catch up on the latest note or alert? The reality is almost none of us do. We get our information now in real time, not in after time. News is no longer delivered to us as a newspaper feed of what happened yesterday. It's now instantaneous. Things pop up on our phones. It's that fast. Most of us get gather our news, and news is spread if I signal and fast typing fingers, or sausages in my case. Believe it or not, there used to be a time when having a car, a job, and a home were actually really important. Now it's to have a phone in your hand and the latest and greatest. Yesterday's science fiction has become today's reality. Captain Kirk's tricorder or whatever that communication device was is now Apple Watch, engaged by a SIM cloud. Some of your phones might go off. We've even become conditioned by the sounds of our cell phones and our devices. I mean, let's try a little social experiment here just while we're at it. How many of you have a cell phone? Yeah, that's right. So let me ask you a few questions. They're honest, you don't have to answer them out loud. How many of you turn your phone off at nighttime? Good, you're better than me. How often do you check your phones for missed messages? How about for missed emails? Notifications. How about phone calls? Do you check to see if there's a message waiting on there? Do you even charge your battery when, oh my goodness, it's down to 90%. Better plug it in. Do you take your phone everywhere you go? And I mean everywhere. Don't answer out loud, but... Do you take your phone to the bathroom? Does your phone sleep beside you at nighttime, except that it's not sleeping, it's wide awake, and when a buzz comes at two o'clock in the morning, do you quickly look over to see who it came from? How often do you check your Wi-Fi signal because you haven't had a notification in the last five minutes and you're wondering if a, someone's missed sending you a note? How many of you check the latest news feeds every hour or more in case something has changed in the world? I was so proud last night when I got a notification at seven o'clock and it was that the, uh, it was a tweet as a matter of fact. And I looked at it and I went, it's 7.02 right now. 
I got the first message here. And it was a message that we have a new in Canada. And then I'm thinking, it came out at 7, and it's 7.02. I got it first. Okay, honestly here. How many of you have felt your pocket buzzing? And so you reach down to grab your phone, and it wasn't buzzing. In fact, there was no alert whatsoever. You vibrated and you thought there was something and you thought someone was sending you a note, someone who loved you or some important message. Something so great, your own existence. Listen, if you answered yes to any of these questions, I mean any of them. Psychologists say that you have something called nomophobia. Nomophobia is no more phone phobia. For those that feel the pocket vibrating and it's not vibrating, you have something that is called by psychologists as phantom ringing sim, uh, syndrome. Every time you get a notification or you hear a phone ring, something new and interesting is happening and it's just for you, the problem is that we don't know in advance when a buzz or a notification or a note message is perfectly designed for you and me. And many of us have desired or sorry, have, have acquired something that's called FOMO. I had to ask my son what that meant. And it means fear of missing out. We never turn our devices off. We're distant from them. from them. Recent studies showed that people were often willing to interrupt even the most important activities merely because they got a notification on a device. It says 80% were willing to answer the phone while they were watching television. 40% would respond to a call while eating a meal. 18% were willing to answer the phone when they were in bed with their spouse. I think it's crazy because I actually can't imagine answering the phone all the night and then I, for some reason, reach for it. But it struck me this week about how many sounds and notifications I jump for. Are you the same? Do you find yourself getting offended if someone doesn't respond to the notification you've just sent them? And I mean, in the next three minutes. I mean, if someone doesn't respond to a text message and a whole hour's gone by, have they lost their phone? Have they passed away? But we respond to so many things so quickly. So many notifications of the world. And we do not know how to respond to God. I listen to the plethora of voices of everything that surrounds me, day in and day out. But for some reason, I'm not very good at hearing God. I'm not very good when he wants to speak a word to me. So it caused me to be challenged. And I prayed, Lord, am I aware when you're trying to notify me of something? So I want you to grab your Bibles and turn to first Kings chapter 19, because that's going to be our text, just two verses today, primarily, we'll touch on some other ones, but I want you to read these ones. I want you to look at a time in Elijah, the prophet's life where he was overwhelmed by his circumstances. And although Elijah, powerful way we could ever imagine, at the top of Mount Carmel, Queen Jezebel, the Philistine, married Israel's king, which was wrong. He married, she married Ahab, and they were chasing after him. In fact, Jezebel even made a promise, because of putting all of the prophets of Baal to death, that she would kill him before the sun went down. Elijah was depressed. He was wallowing in self-pity. 
But how could he do that? He's and yet somehow he feels like he's the only one that still cares about honoring God. And Elijah is overwhelmed. Is there anyone here on Zoom today that just might feel, if they were completely honest, that they're a little overwhelmed with the notifications of the day? Overwhelmed by work or family or lack of family because someone's passed away? Loneliness, sadness, finance. It's his news or other world events. How about being overwhelmed by COVID? Vaccines are not vaccines. Maybe the government overreach or inactivity. Would anyone actually admit to themselves that the last 24 months had taken a toll on them? Job 5.7 says, people are born for trouble as readily as sparks fly up from a fire. And Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, one of my favorite verses, in this world, you will have trouble. Oh, yeah, that's not the part that I like. I like the part that says, but take courage. For I've overcome the world. But think about it. Jesus says we're going to have trouble. trouble. See, we kind of get the idea that the Christian life is not meant to be something that is exempt from problems. We kind of understand that that it's not going to be without hardships, that it's not going to be without pain. But when the pain hits us specifically, it messes with us. We know that there's no guarantee that we'll never hear the word cancer or the word terminal or that we'll never cry over a prodigal child or family member that we'll never be lied to, that we'll never have perfect love, that we won't have times when we feel like giving up and quitting. All you have to do is look in the Bible, and you'll find exactly what I'm talking about. David was a great man of faith, was he not? He was a great man of God, the king of Israel, a worshiper, but it didn't exempt him from trouble. He had much pain. What about Job? Job's a great example of that, isn't he? He was a righteous man, but he endured grief like you and I couldn't imagine. Pain and loss like you and I couldn't imagine. Physical pain boils on his body that would seem humanly impossible to endure. And Job said, I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. And today, there seems to be a spirit of heaviness that sits upon many people, and sadly, upon Christians. Fear seems to be rampant everywhere we turn. The church and the world seems to be overwhelmed with this constant bombardment of, or bombardment of, of constant negativity. Christians seem to want to split hairs over dividing doctrinally on tiny little things that make very little difference, including our response to COVID within and without the church. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.10. He says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no division. visions in the church rather purpose oh wouldn't that be glorious and in galatians 5 15 paul says but if you are always biting and devouring one another watch out beware of destroying one another and continues in first timothy 4 7 he says do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives tales instead train yourself to be godly in 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, he said, For I have decided that while I was with you, one who was crucified. See, Paul is saying to you and me, I don't have time for the nonsense. I don't have time for the garbage that's going on in the world. If it isn't about Jesus, don't waste my time. The verse is a real challenge to me right now. You see, I hear Christians talk more about the coming of the Lord in these days than I ever have 
in my lifetime. They speak about, oh, are these the days of Noah? Well, look, there's wars over here, and there's rumors of wars happy. There's ice storms, there's blizzards, there's a foot of snow. Look, we're Canadians for crying out loud. But these very same Christians lump me into the group, seem to get bent out of shape when it looks like we're living in prophetic times. And what it is that we should properly be doing today and how we should or should not be acting. Well, listen. Stop it. Are we living like full hope in Jesus? Or are we living as those who've been redeemed? Who've been given hope? Do you want to know what we should be doing in this day? Yeah, listen. I'd sign me up. Give me the book. Listen to what Paul says to us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 5. This is not just for preachers, so listen to this. He says to Timothy, preach the word. Be prepared in and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them people who will speak only what their itching ears are willing to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth. They'll turn away to myths and conspiracies. But you keep your head in all circumstances. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Spreading fear is not sharing the gospel, my friends. Jesus is the gospel. 2 Timothy 2.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of what? He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of timidity, but of, sorry, of love and power and of self-discipline. Yes, there is a hell, and we need to proclaim the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ. There is a hell. There is a consequence to those of us who do not turn our lives to Jesus. It's called death. Jesus called it an everlasting fire. Well, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Come on, cheer me up, Andrew. He called it an everlasting punishment. He called it complete darkness, an everlasting destruction. But while heaven is real, we need to take no pleasure in wanting to see sinners going to hell. But I've got to tell you, I have been absolutely sickened manners that wish the death of our prime minister. And more notifications coming up on my phone that I don't really want to see that say that people should, should take the life of our leaders. Shame on us. It disgusts me when I see fellow believers, followers of Jesus Christ, liking posts like that online. We're supposed to so good seed and let God give the increase. Not to burn up the harvest. Not to run through the fields with lit torches. Now listen, I'm not saying that you can't speak against things that are not for dis- uh, happening that are righteous. And you need to stand up and speak those things. If God has laid it on your heart to speak, then speak. But we have to be obedient to what God calls us to do. But when people want our prime minister and our premier to be taken out, we are wrong. And when we support that, we are wrong. And we are in danger of hell's fire itself. But God spoke something to Elijah that I believe is very applicable for us today. In fact, I think he's speaking it to you and me. God said, I'm not in that wind. I'm not in the earthquake. I'm not in the fire. 
what he's saying to us right now in the year 2022 and February. He said, I'm not in your news feed. And if you're looking for me on CTV or a cable news network, you are not going to find me. God is saying to us, I'm not in the distractions. I'm far away from them. He's telling us to listen to Jesus. We need to hear his still, small voice. If you want to hear his still, small voice, if you want to hear the majesty of God again, this, if you want to hear the, the this is what the Lord says, then perhaps we need to train our ears again to hear the right notifications. We need to train our, our ears to hear a voice that says, I am the Lord that heals you. A voice that says there's healing for the brokenhearted, deliverance for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, that there's freedom for those who are oppressed. A voice that speaks deliverance to our next door neighbors, restoration, joy, hope, revival, truth, strength, and freedom. Not, did you hear that someone's running? running? Or did you hear what so-and-so said? Listen to the voice of Jesus again. Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, in the um, message translation says this, Are you tired, worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy on you or unfitting. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live lightly and freely. Are you a child of God? then you're called to a purpose. You've been chosen. God made you before the foundation of the world to accomplish his purpose and his goal in and through you. You are God's special procession. And you've been forgiven. You're cleansed. You're his handiwork, his masterpiece. He's... You're more than a conqueror of the living God. Listen, if we spend our time getting our notifications from the world, if we spend our time getting our notifications from the bing in our pocket, I can almost guarantee you it's not building you up. In fact, it's probably making you upset and exhausted, aggravated and confused. And always feeling like you're running around in circles. I remember listening to a song several years ago. It's called Running Just to Catch Myself. Is that the story of your life? life? Then turn your notifications off. Oh, yeah, it's easy to do this one, right? But turn the other notifications off. Are you surrounding yourself with people that are telling you just what your itching ears are wanting to hear? Turn the notifications off. If you don't turn them off, maybe we won't hear from God. Because I can tell you now, he has spoken and he is speaking through this. First Corinthians 14, 33 says this, for God is not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. Do you have peace right now? Do you have peace in the notifications? Do you have peace in the people that you're allowing to surround yourself with? Are you influencing them or are they influencing you? Are you in a place of peace with God? God says, Get alone with God. Turn off the phone. Yes, I said it. Turn off the phone. 
when I get home today, my wife is going to remind me of how hard it is for me to turn the phone off. See, the scripture says that he makes us lay down in green pastures. And on those green pastures, there aren't cell phones or disturbances. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yes, his very reputation depends on it. The question is this. Do you want to lay down with him? Or would you rather pick up your phone? Let the word of God lead you. Let the word of God guide you. Let it be the lamp to your feet and the light to your path. If you want to hear God today, if you want to hear what he is saying to you today, you need to. He's not rude, though. He's not pushy. But don't make him part of the fake news you listen to. He is truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So what happened before Jezebel sent his messenger to Elijah? Elijah got this notification that Jezebel was going to kill him. 24 hours. Before that night was through, she was going to put him to death. After he read the message or heard the message, it was sent to him, and it put him in a frenzy of depression. Self-pity. And Elijah prayed that God would even take his life. life. Messages, words. They're sent with intentions. And when a person sends you a message, it always has an assignment. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's not. But when God speaks, you don't have to worry about his intentions. His intentions are always good for us. And what he speaks in his book is always good for us. Psalm 19.140 says, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Yes, God's promises have been thoroughly tested, and you can trust them with your life. And when Elijah got Jezebel's message, he got so worked up that he forgot all that God had done for him. He forgot that God had proved himself over and over and over. That the true God over all of Israel was on his side. But when he paid attention to the wrong notifications, Elijah somehow forgot all about that. He forgot about the three and a half years of famine that happened because he prayed. He forgot about the one who answered prayer and 450 prophets of Baal ended up being slaughtered after the sacrifice on Mount Carmel was eaten up by fire. And all of the water that was poured all over it were all destroyed. He forgot that God had given him an extraordinary ability to run and outrun the chariots of the king. One notification from Queen Jezebel made him forget all the blessings of God. And like the messages that we're giving to those around us, messages to encourage and build up, or messages to destroy. Imagine if we turned our notifications off and maybe even turned our notifier off. Just a few minutes, just a few minutes more each day that we would spend in front of God's word, waiting on him to speak. Perhaps maybe just a few minutes a week. Perhaps maybe even that you'd take a couple of minutes in a month. But I'm busy. I'm a busy guy. I, I wake up at this hour and I got this. I got to get my breakfast in. I got a shower. I got to get to work. Then I, as soon as I get to work, I don't have any time because I got to get my Tim Hortons in me and I got to have my donut and then I got to get to work and I got to plow through my work and I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to do... You've got to stop.
We need God. Listen, I can be having a great day. I can have my praise music on in the office of the church. I can have my Bible in front of me. I'm learning from God. I'm studying and I'm encouraged by it. And then one little distraction, one little note, one crazy ill-timed phone call that I choose to take instead of shutting off. And it can distract me from all of the good things that God is doing. My singing turns into sighing. My worship turns into worry. And my quiet time becomes quitting time. But just like Elijah, I can forget everything that God has done for me. Everything. And I can go into hiding in a cave. Dark, dark place. Isolation. But I have a question. What notifications do you have to turn off in your life? And are you getting God's notifications? There was a great wind. It was a mighty earthquake and a blazing fire. But it wasn't the wind, it wasn't the earthquake, and it wasn't the fire. It was the still, small voice of God that changed everything for Elijah. It was the word of God. One word from God changed everything. One word from God deleted the message from Jezebel. One word from God, and Elijah came out a new spirit. He came out no longer with the ground shaking. He came out with a burning desire for God. One word, God's word. It shall not return unto him void, but will accomplish everything that it was intended to do. Yes, I can go into the word depressed, but I'm going to come out dancing. Oh, you got to watch that. I can go into the world f- word fearful and afraid, but I can come out with power. I can go into the word in thinking over and over and over that I'm defeated and I can come out a victor. I can go into the world to get away, into the word to get away from Jezebel and I can come out speaking about Jesus. All I need is one word from God and all you need is one word from God. I'm thinking it might be time for some of us to block Satan. Turn his notifications off. Delete his ringtone. You don't need fear. I don't need fear. I need faith. I don't need to hear what what the world needs to say. Hebrews 3.15 says, and as it is said, today, if you hear the voice of God, today, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Are we paying attention to God's word? Are we paying attention to his notifications every day? Are you in his word? God is saying something to you and me. Okay, maybe he's not saying it to you. Maybe he's just saying it to me. But listen in for my benefit, because you could remind me. The notifications that are here in this world are not the word of the Lord. Christ alone is my help. He is my helper. He is the strong tower that I can run into and be safe. Ding, quack, buzz, In case you didn't notice, this is your notification. And Jesus is inviting you. He's inviting me. He wants to speak to us today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Let's pray. Father, you know how true it is this past week that every single time I seem to be working on this message and get back focused on trying to prepare for today, another distraction, another bing bong or quack came my way. And they were all good things, or most of them were. So it was easy to justify them. 
But God, if I'm not spending time in your word, how do I build my family up? If I'm not spending time in your word and I'm not worshiping you, God, how, how do I build up those in our church? God, if I'm not understanding your word and waiting on you to hear a word from almighty God, how can I be a light to those around me? And just maybe there's one or two people on this call today through Zoom or here in the church building that are sensing the same thing. So many bings and bongs and notifications hear you because you're quiet and gentle. And yet you invite us to come to you. You invite us to come and be healed. You're inviting us to come and be refreshed. You're coming. You invite us to come and drink. God, when you speak, will you clean our ears out to hear because we do want to hear here in Jesus name. Amen. Stephen's going to put a song up there. I would invite you to remain seated. If you'd like to sing along with it, please feel free.
Tell them. Tell them. Because how will they hear unless someone tells them? And if the only thing that comes out of your mouth, if the only thing that comes out of my mouth is, hey, did you see the latest tweet? It's not words of life. So I ask you, hold me accountable. Hold me accountable because you need words of life for me. And I'll hold you accountable. Is it the latest news? Is it the latest thing? Is it the latest complaint about our government? Is it the latest complaint about what's going on? Listen, I'm not telling you that you can't complain about them. And I'm not telling you that you can't do the thing that God's laid on your heart. What I am telling you is that people need the Lord. They don't need our complaints. So which will you do? Will you speak words of life? 